Hey, fifth grade, how we doing? Uh, here to bring you your ELA story for week one. Uh, hope you guys are all doing very well. I miss you greatly. Um, today is Tuesday. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that um, we will be going over a couple things in our ELA story. So on Mondays, this is kind of how this goes going forward. On Mondays for ELA, you have a comprehension skill sheet that you're going to be working on. Um, it's similar to the stuff that you usually do in your packet. Um, it's only one sheet, okay? And then on Tuesdays, I'm going to read the first half of the story, okay? The first half of our story, um, our story's a good one, actually. Um, it's good because we just did this in gym class. Um, it's called The Gymnast, okay? And it's going to start on page 136. I know I gave you a sheet of what exactly the page number is, but I would like for you to start on page 136 because I just want to kind of go over a couple things. Um, from that page, then we're going to go on to the comprehension skill. Okay, the comprehension skill doesn't just mean comprehension. What that means is what's the skill and the, what they're trying to teach us in the story. Okay, so for this skill that they're trying to teach us, uh, for this story, it's called drawing conclusions. And then I'm going to go over a little bit of vocabulary. So on Mondays, we do the comprehension skill. That's going to be on your own and your packet, just like you normally would. Tuesdays, I read. Wednesday, you're going to do the vocabulary sheet, um, kind of like similar to the packet. So you only have two sheets to do. Um, and that vocabulary sheet is going to just be kind of a review of the vocabulary that I covered the day before um, for this video for Tuesday. Um, so what I'll do today is I'll be a nice guy, which I, you know I am. Okay, I'm going to go over the comprehension skill, what it means. I'm going to go over the vocabulary words, maybe what they mean too. Okay. And then I'm going to read the first part of our story, which is the gymnast. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to email me or reach out to me, even in this comment section. I can get back to you anytime. Um, what I'm, my goal is, is to, after I read the story, in the comment section, there's going to be a question for each one of you fifth graders. Okay, we one for Savannah, one for Christian, and one for Mark. Uh, your goal is to be able to answer that question in the comment section afterwards. What does that tell me as a teacher? Well, that tells me that you're following along in our lessons. You're enjoying the stories. And if you have any questions in there, feel free to write it right in there too. Um, maybe questions about the story, questions about uh, what we're doing in school, anything that you'd like to share, any type of communication. You know I'm an open book, anything you really need. Okay, speaking of books, I have my book too. Okay, so I turn to page 136. You should too. I'll give you a little bit of time. On page 136, you're going to see a girl that looks like almost as like she's teaching the, a class, a math class. You're going to see a boy that's playing the piano and another boy that was in a little bit of a rodeo. Okay. And the question that it says on the left-hand side is improving ourselves. How can you improve yourself? It's a great question. It's a, I love that question. Um, it's something that you could do every day. How can you be a better person every day? Okay, so it says share your experiences about improving yourself. I'm going to share my own personal experiences, and you can kind of ask yourself that question too. How can I improve or get better every day? Not only just as a person, but maybe a classmate, a brother, or a sister. How can you be better every day? For me, how do I improve myself every day? I, my goal every day is to make sure that I put a smile on as many people's faces as possible. Whether that's my wife, my son, my family, you guys, um, and, and I do I do it through humor? Sure. Am I funny guy? Yeah. Um, but really, my goal is to just enjoy life um, and to make sure that I make the most of it every day. Um, you know, if I can make someone smile, um, if I bring myself to tears. Um, over something I'm extremely passionate about, something I really love. Um, that That's all I can ask for in a day. And that's how I'm going to improve myself every day. So the question I have for you guys is, how are you going to be a, a better person every day? Okay, maybe that could be the question I have in the comments. How can you be a better student, a better brother or sister every day? How can you be a better son or daughter every day? Um, you know, those are questions that, you should ask yourself every day that you wake up. And then when you go to bed, um, you know, right when you're tucking yourself in, think, think of yourself, did I get better today? Um, 
So that's just just a you know random Mr. McQueen moment for you. But as fifth graders, you should be able to answer those questions right now. I'm going to turn the page. I'm on page 138 now, um, which I'm going to go over your comprehension skill, which is drawing conclusions. Probably one of the hardest skills to have to do um, because answers usually aren't there in the story. Um, you kind of got to use your brain and make inferences. Remember, inferences are kind of taking a little bit of all the, say you're making a little bit of a jumbled soup, okay? Say you're having a little bit of a jambalaya, all right? It's a little hint of every single thing put in there, and that's kind of what it's going to make your soup. All right, but you got to have every little sprinkle of everything in there going forward. So if you look on that page, in order to draw conclusions, you got to take each fact or detail in the story um, and then your own prior knowledge of what you already know. Now, you should know a lot about gymnastics already. OK, think about, you know, walking the tightrope, swinging on the rings in gym class, um, you know, climbing the rock wall, um, climbing the rope, being a part of the monkey and the gorilla club. You know, just little things. You have prior knowledge already, so it should be pretty easy for you to draw conclusions in this story. Um, so that's your first skill. And the second one is visualizing. Visualizing is kind of closing your eyes as a reader. Um, and as Mr. McQueen reads the words to you, being able to picture in your brain, why are your eyes closed? Picture in your brain what exactly the reader, um, excuse me, what the author is trying to tell you or portray to you. OK, so that uh, those are your two skills that we're going to be focusing on. That's what's on that sheet from yesterday uh, in your packet as well. All right. That next page. OK, the next page, 140. Uh, you're going to see a picture of a phenomenal Olympian Olympic gymnastics uh, uh, gymnast gymnast. Excuse me. Um, and from that, it's easier in daydreams. Yes, because just like any type of sport any type of musical instrument, any type of thing that you have to work hard at, it takes time, okay? It's easy to daydream about it, but you have to work at it. But before I get to that, we're going to focus on this side right here, okay, where we're talking about the vocabulary words. Now, this is going to help you with your sheet for tomorrow, your vocabulary words. Um, if you can kind of look at the first one, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's kind of like my shirt. That's why I wore it. Bluish, something that's a shade of blue. Name some things that are bluish. I guess you could say the sky without a cloud in it. Um, the ocean uh, is bluish. Um, my eyes, yeah, are bluish. I know, I know. Um, so there's some things that are bluish that you can kind of uh, already, this line around the story of the week is bluish. Um, so something that is has a hint or a shade of blue to it. Next one down, skidded. Okay, you can kind of look at the picture. That's what that car does when they hit the brakes as quickly as they can. All right, if something comes skidded, it comes to a sudden halt or a sudden stop. All right, usually when that happens, especially with cars, um, you get that puff of smoke afterwards because that burnt rubber. Um, so if something's skidded, um, you know, think about in the winter time. All right, we have all that snow on the road. Thank the Lord we don't have that right now. Um, but if something skidded off the road, you know that it slid off, all right? And you try to stop as much as you can. Next picture down is pretty self-explanatory, a somersault. Okay, I'm not going to perform a somersault for you right now, okay? Don't get crazy. Maybe if I was in class, I might be doing it. Um, but a somersault, all right? It's usually when your whole body does one full turn, okay? You put your head down and you swirl over. Um, next part down is a cartwheel. All right, also a gymnastics move. I'm not going to be performing it. You don't want to see it, I promise. All right, cartwheels, using your hands and kind of going all 360 back up top. Gymnastics, you also know what that means. Hesitation, all right? Hesitation is when, and then you take a sudden pause, okay? If, say, you're going to hesitate to do something, you might be a little bit nervous, okay? Usually when I do these visit videos, I need to hesitate and think before I'm going to speak. Or I'm saying, we're going to come out. Right. No one's going to understand it. So hesitation is taking a sudden pause to think before we speak. So that in gymnastics, they might have to take a hesitation or a pause, a sudden stop, to think before they perform their next move. 
Next one is limelight. If you're in the limelight, it's kind of like being in the spotlight. Okay, if you're in the limelight, everybody's got their eyes on you. Okay, next one down is something that's throbbing. Think about this. Say you're doing some gymnastics movement, okay, and you're climbing down the ropes and you accidentally slide down a little bit. How do those hands feel? Probably a little hurt, right? You got a little bit of rope burn and then your hands are doing this. Okay, you kind of get that throbbing feeling, okay, where it's just like all that blood is flowing to those hands. You might also get a throbbing feeling. Say you accidentally, you're, you're riding on your scooter or on a, on a bicycle. Um, you go to hop off and you accidentally twist your ankle. Your ankle's going to be a little sore, but it might feel that throbbing feeling, that pulse feeling back in your ankle. And the last one down is wincing. Okay, a lot of times, especially Mr. McQueen, I'll be honest, when Mr. McQueen would have to go to the doctors, all right, and you have to give a shot and get a shot. You might be wincing. You might be cringing a little bit like, oh, yay, go for it. All right, wincing, all right, kind of a little bit of pain, okay? So maybe that throbbing and wincing might go hand in hand. I'll give you an example because you guys were all in my class when it happened. Mr. McQueen thought he was, you know, Mr. Uh, NBA superstar, went to dunk that basketball, came down, rolled his ankle, right? Ended up breaking a bone in his foot in class. You remember that? Yes, I know. His ankle was throbbing and it was wincing in pain. I was like, <sighs> right? You're a little bit of painful. So those are all your vocabulary words that should help you with your sheet for tomorrow. Now my goal is to bring you the story, The Gymnast. We are on page 143. This is an autobiography. What is an autobiography? It's a story that a, about a person's life. Okay, a major event in it, told by the person who actually lived it. So Gary Soto, the author of our story, guess what? This story might be a little bit about him. Okay, so there's a picture of the gymnast. And the question of the week is, why do people try to change themselves? Okay, remember what I said. What is going to make you a better person for tomorrow? What are you going to do today? All right, so here we go. Page 144. For three days of my 11th summer, so he's 11 years old, I listened to my mother yap about my cousin Isaac, who was taking gymnastics. She was so proud of him, she said one evening at the stove as she pounded a round steak into a carne asada, a crushed heap of beans into refrito. I was jealous because I had watched my share of the wide world of sports and knew that people admired or thought fondly of or liked an athlete who could somersault without hurting himself. I pushed aside my solitary game of Chinese checkers and spent a few minutes rolling around the backyard until I was dizzy and itchy from the grass. Okay, so... The person that is performing the gymnastics name is Isaac. That is not the main character of the story. The main character of the story, I think, is Gary Soto, because it is an autobiography. And he is jealous, or his mom is jealous, that their son, their uh, nephew, Isaac, is in gymnastics, but Gary is not. Okay, So Gary's like, I can do all this stuff in my backyard. Next paragraph down. That Saturday, I went to Isaac's house where I ate plums and sat under an aluminum arbor watching my cousin, dressed in gymnastic shorts and top, doing spindly cartwheels and backflips in his backyard while he instructed, this is the correct way to do it. He breathed in the grassy air, leaped, and came up smiling this, with the straightest teeth in the world. Seems like Isaac's got a lot of things going for him. I followed him to, do, to the front lawn. When a car passed, he did a backflip and looked out of the side of his eyes to see if any of the passengers had taken a look or were looking. Some pointed while others looked ahead dully at the road. I spent a few minutes rolling around the backyard until I was dizzy and itchy with the grass, as it says on that next page. Okay, so, so far, Isaac seems like he is the gymnast and Gary Soto is not. But Isaac, I guess you could say, is a little self, hmm, he's a little bit into himself, I guess you could say, nicely, okay, is that he is 
He thinks he is the best gymnast. Okay, we're gonna find out a little bit about Isaac moving forward. Okay, next page. Great illust great pictures, great uh, photography work here and illustrations, you could say. But I'm gonna keep reading on page 147. My cousin was a show off, just like Mr. McQueen just said. But I figured he was allowed the limelight before one appreciative dog who had come over to, to look at him. I envied him and his cloth gymnast gymnast shoes. Okay, so envied means like I was kind of jealous of him a little bit and I kind of was like in awe like man I wish I was him that's what that means I like the way they looked slim black and cool those shoes they seem special something I could never slip onto my own feet next paragraph down I ate the plums and watched him until he was sweaty and out of breath when he was finished I begged him to let me wear his cloth shoes Drops of sweat fell at his feet. He looked at me with disdain, like... Ran a yellow towel across his face and patted his neck dry. He tore the white tape from his wrists. I liked the tape as well as I tried to paste it around my own wrists. He washed off his hands. I asked him about that white powder he had on his hands. And he said it kept his hands dry. Which it does. If you notice a lot of gymnastics, they put that chalk on their hands. Uh, it keeps their hands dry, easier to hold on to things. I asked him why he needed dry hands to do cartwheels and backflips. He said that all the gymnasts kept their hands dry, which is what I just said. Then drank from a bottle of greenish water he said was filled with nutrients. Probably something a little similar to what we have now, like Powerade or Gatorade. Last paragraph for that page. I asked him again if I could wear his shoes. He slipped them off and said, Okay, just for a little while. The shoes were loose, but I liked them. I went to the front yard with my wrist dripping tape, my hands white as gloves. What's Gary going to try? He's going to try it, isn't he? I smiled slyly, thought I looked neat. But when I did a cartwheels, the shoes flew off along with the tape. And my cousin yelled and stomped the grass. Yeah, why? Well, those shoes didn't technically belong, belong to Gary. They belonged to Isaac. But there's going to be a little bit bigger problem, too. Page 148. 148. It's going to be the last page I read for you guys today. I was glad to get home. I was jealous and miserable. But the next day, I found a pair of old vinyl slippers in the closet that were sort of like gymnastic shoes. I pushed my feet into them, hugging, excuse me, tugging and wincing because they were a little too small. I took a few steps, admiring, admiring my feet, which looked like bloated water balloons, water balloons, and went outside to do cartwheels on the front lawn. Good idea or bad idea? I hope you're all saying bad idea. Okay, tight shoes. A friend skidded to a stop on his bike. One cheek fat with sunflower seeds. I'm chewing some sunflower seeds. His mouth turned to a stop. He asked why I was wearing slippers on a hot day. I made a face at him and said that they were gymnastic shoes, not slippers, silly man. He watched me do cartwheels for a while, then rode away doing a wheelie. Next paragraph. I returned inside. I looked for tape to wrap around my wrists, but could find only circle bandages in the medicine cabinet. I dipped my hands in flour to keep them dry and went back outside. What do you dip them in? Dip in flour. Kind of that same white texture. Back outside to do cartwheels, and finally, after much hesitation, much pause, a backflip that nearly cost me my own life when I landed on my head. Hey. I crawled to the shade. Stars of pain pulsated in my shoulder and neck. That's why it's better to do this around an adult. Okay, That's why you can do it around Mr. Justito and Mr. Giorgio. Probably not a good idea to do it on your own. My brother glided by on his bike, smooth as a kite. He stared at me and asked why I was wearing slippers. I didn't answer him this time. 
My neck still hurt. He asked about the flower in my hands. I told him to leave me alone. I turned on the hose and drank cool water. I'm going to stop there. Okay, so, so far in the story, we have Isaac. Okay, that, that is the cousin, the gymnast. He tapes his wrist. He wears that, puts that white chalk in his hands so they're nice and dry. And he wears those special cloth shoes, those vinyl cloth shoes that he wears that help him perform special gymnastics movements like a backflip, cartwheels. And then you have Gary Soto, the, the author of our story, who doesn't seem like much of a gymnast, but he's going to try hard because he kind of idolizes or looks up to Isaac. I um, mean, he wants to wear that tape. He puts the flour on his hand, even though flour should only be used for cooking stuff. And he gets out there and he tries to do his own cartwheels, his own backflip, and boom, lands right on the back of his head and his neck. Dangerous. I'm interested to find out what's going to happen to Gary going forward. So remember, check the comments of this video. Okay, there'll be a special qu uh, question in there for you guys. Um, and keep working on those packets. Uh, see you guys on Thursday for a follow-up to this story, and then we're going to answer some of those comprehension questions at the end. All right, I miss you guys greatly, and I hope to hear from you guys sh shortly and soon. All right, talk to you guys later.